so it's Jason here at uh, the Retro Computer Festival 2017 here at the Centre for Computing History. Uh, I'm here with Dave um, who has brought in uh, an amazing collection of uh, kind of modern retro. I think it's probably the best description for it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. reproduction. Um, yeah. And what we're looking at here is uh, an Apple One. Um, an amazingly beautiful piece of uh, equipment, fantastically built, really impressive stuff. Um, so, Dave, tell us about it. Yeah, like you said, it's a reproduction Apple One. Um, board's being designed by a guy in America, uh, Mike Willigal, and he's basically reproduced the board with all the traces pretty much spot on to the, how the original was. So he's used high resolution photographs, and I believe he's at, had the board x-rayed, one of the original ones. Right just to get the detail spot on on it. Fantastic. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so more than just build this to look good, I mean, this baby actually works. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so can you tell us a little bit about it? So the board itself, um, we've got uh, a linear power supply at the top there. Yeah. Top so right you, corner. You've got the power coming in to the transformers here. Right. Uh, you've got power switch in a little black box there. And then it's basically feeding up to your main 5 volt regulator there, uh -huh. um, which is very hot. And I just it runs hot, out. does it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it runs about 80 degrees C. Ouch. So it's, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit toasty. Uh, and then you've got your plus um, 12 volts, minus 12 volts, and also minus 5 volts. Okay, so, so why do it need plus or minus 12 as well? I mean, it's just basically a TTL logic board. Yeah, you basically your RAMs, I think, use. I think they also use, along with the plus five, it's plus 12, oh, okay. and it's some of the shift registers for the video display as well. They need 12 as well? Yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. Sorry? Yeah, carry on. So, um, yeah. bottom half of the board, that is... Uh... Yeah, basically, that, that's your computer section down there. Right. So, you've got uh, lower 4K of memory, upper 4K of memory. So, some original boards only ship with the base 4K. Um, you've got your memory decoder and address decoder in there. Uh -huh. You've got your 6502 right. CPU, uh -huh. um, keyboard interface, and then the two rock chips down there are the uh, monitor ROMs. So it's 256 bytes of onboard ROM. Right. And then basically there's an 8-bit bus which goes up to your video section. Right. Um, and up there, again, it's using, you've got your uh, character generator ROM, and you don't have video RAM as such, or you, you do, but it's basically shift registers. Right, okay. So your data's coming in, it's, these are each 1,000 bits serial shift registers, uh -huh. which at the time it would have been cheap to produce, I would imagine. Uh -huh. um, but it does mean that your screen acts like a terminal. So you can't clear the screen through software, and you can't delete, you can't move the cursor position. It's purely the data goes in and then is. Wow, that's out. really rudimentary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's a but this form. machine was designed to be a cheap kind of yeah, home computer, absolutely. so you've got to take yeah. every um, cut you can. Yeah. And I suppose video chips at that time would have been relatively expensive, so yeah. out of the question. And obviously, he just wanted to build a computer. Yeah. And yeah. the Apple II was evolved from that, but was a huge improvement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, design this as a video terminal in the first place, I think, wasn't it? it I, was I believe just, so, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. There was some so. discussion of whether some of the work was copied from um, Don Lancaster's uh, TV typewriter, but right. it, it turned out it is pretty unique the way right. he's done it. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Wow. And then you've got a keyboard down the bottom that looks absolutely yep. spankingly new. Uh, that's because it is. Right. Yeah. Um, eBay deal. Um, it was new old stock from an Apple II clone, uh -huh. ITT 2020. Right. Um, so yeah, it is nice and shiny new. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, so this was just straight on. E Are they still on eBay? Uh, no. Oh, no. What? No. We need more. I kind of bought a few of them. So you, you, bought, you bought the last yeah, of the so stuff. It was a job lot, so it'd be rude not to. Yeah, well, it was rude doing it actually. I would like to say, but anyway, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Move on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's cool. So that's, so that's an Apple II clone kind of board. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you just got uh, your ASCII encoded output there. Uh -huh. There's a little box board in there which just converts a few of the pins and just maps it right. correctly for okay. the Apple That's one. really nicely done, really nicely done. Okay. So your little box there with your power switch and then a composite yeah. video out, is it? Yeah, so it's just taking the composite video from the top of the board, just running it down there to, uh -huh. to a phono socket there. Right. Just makes it a little bit neater. Right. Yeah. And, and she works, nice so um, yep. you so see her in action. We'll proper chunky power switch. So you power it up, you just get a screen full of garbage Okay, so usually. it's not initialised, so it's just kind nope. of junk, right? So you've got a 
basically press one button which clears the screen, uh -huh. and that's the only way, say, of clearing the screen, uh -huh. and then reset the processor, and now you're running the code from the monitor ROM there. Okay, so it's got an onboard monitor ROM. It does, yeah. yeah. But so that's it, there's nothing that's, else on there. That's purely it on the main board itself. Uh -huh. On the, the cassette interface down there, you do have another 256 bytes of ROM, and that's purely for the cassette I.O. Right, so, okay. Other than that, all you can do on the monitor ROMs is dump memory, edit memory. Right. That's pretty much it. Cool. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. So can we load something into it? We certainly can. So you've got to basically, first of all, switch um, control over to the software on the cassette interface. Uh -huh. So call that up, which is in hex, is that memory address. R to run. So now you're running the code from the cassette interface. OK. Um, and what you've got to do next, to load the program in, you've got to specify which area of memory that code is going into. Um, so right. from memory now, in demo software, it's 280 to... So again, you're giving it a memory address, and R is to read into memory. Uh -huh. If you wanted to dump that section of memory to take, it's W. So it's just okay. the opposite yeah. way yeah. around. So then turn, press play and then it should load into memory. So it's now loading, it says nothing to show you what it's up to? No, um, the only feedback you can guess is the small LED on the cassette board. But it's right. a bit temperamental on how that work, reliable that is. If it doesn't load, it's usually a case of adjust the volume and then play again. Right, standard 80s yeah. mess with the pretty, volume. Pretty right. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So how much code is there? How long is this going to take to load? Um, it's just under 4K right. size, probably closer to 3K. And you'll know as soon as the, you get the cursor prompt back, um, the backslash prompt. So the prompt is the slash, it'll return yeah. to the slash and yeah. then... Right. Which I don't believe is actually accurate. I think I've got the wrong character generator. Oh, right, on okay. There, but we'll ignore but for that. for us today, it's, it's, it's a slash. Enough. Right, yep. Yeah. So that so you that's can tell loaded. that's loaded. Yeah. Right. So all you do is specify the address you want to start the code. And then R to run, again. right. And there we go. Look at that, absolutely magic. Yeah. yeah, you can see what's coming up, yeah. Yeah, if you stand far enough <laughs> back, it, it almost looks like it graphics. Looks like, yeah, it does, yeah. it really does. Yeah. The legend himself. There he is. Was this is for you. Yeah, thanks Was. Magic, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, without this machine, no Apple II. Exactly. No yeah. Macs, no, well, who knows. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that's fantastic. That is a really cool build. It's beautifully done in that case there as well. And um, yeah, thanks for bringing it along today. Really appreciate More it. More than welcome. Thank so um, yeah, and then maybe you can help us get ours populated as well if you're finding the old components. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to buy a keyboard? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll do a deal. We'll do a deal off camera though. Yeah. Cheers. Nice. All right. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Dave. Cheers. Thanks a lot.